Eyes down for the other one. Good morning folks. What a beautiful day. Even I don't need to wear a jumper. Well, I've had a brief tidy up and I've dived into this pump and I've managed to smash that. But that bush was already broken and if you look at the play on that there's no wonder why it wasn't working this is this is just worn out god knows how long it had been in my mother's place michael hasn't been able to come up with another one over the weekend so the only alternative is to get another pump i'm gonna have to get another pump these now this is a pump out of a central heating boiler out of a gas fired central heating boiler and they've made them a bastard size. That's a standard three quarter inch union, which doesn't fit. That's a union that fits. In fact, this is the unions that came off it. But as you can see, it's not 22 millimeter. So they've made them a bastard size. That isn't compatible with that. I can't take that off and put that um I can't take that off and put that on in its place like I normally would do. I'd normally just change the head. I very rarely bother, unless it's leaking, I very rarely bother changing the body of the pump, just change the pump head. Uh, it's much quicker and much easier. Uh, so there you go. So pretty much we've got no option but to get another pump. So what I'm going to do today is something else. I haven't decided what yet, but when I have, I'll bring you back. Well, I've just got started on the starter for the uh, Rapido, and uh, the mower's broken down. Or at least, the mower's trying to cut a number one American Marines cut, and won't go any higher. So we've, Keith obviously did some damage when he hit a tree stump with it. So we're going to go and look at that. So I'll take you with me. Right folks, well, we appear to have a serious oil leak, but I can see nothing wrong with the height mechanism, which is very, very mystifying, because the deck does seem to be low at the front, but there doesn't seem to be any reason why it should be low at the front. So I'm going to have a good look around and then uh, see if we can make it higher at the front. It's as simple as that. Right, if I find it I'll bring you back. Well we've tracked our oil leak. The o-ring's gone off the uh, off the filler tube and uh, it needs a new one and also this was loose so we'll tighten that up. I've put some PTFE on that. We'll tighten that up and I'll just pop down the workshop and get an o-ring for there and then we should be sorted again. Let's hope. Bye now. Well folks, we've fixed the uh, leaky oil pipe. We've found the damage that the uh, tree stump caused. And we've also found the damage on the ends of the uh, the cutter, which unfortunately has reached the end of its life. So we'll be looking for another one of those. Uh, and I've adjusted the deck to bring the front up a bit, so that it rides a bit higher at the front. And uh, for now, we're going to have to go with it, I think. So that's it. So we're just going to put some more oil in it, and then. Uh, Jobs are good, I hope. Yonder will be a distant tractor man. Tractoring. I took the deck off, reset the deck height, straightened the bent ends of the cutter out, tried to fit a new blade but they're slightly different and it wouldn't fit. Put it all back together and the job seems to be a good one. And we fixed the oil leak as well. So, even though the poor thing is rotting off its chassis, it lives to fight another day. 
So there we go. Out in the bright sunshine. Not too hot. Very nice day. Not what I had in mind for today. But never mind. The job's done. And that looks to be cutting rather well. It is rather long. The grass is rather long. It's, uh, of course, it's gone too far as it usually is. But that looks to be that looks to be cutting well. Like always with these tractors, when they get old, they need to be torn to pieces and rebuilt because they they, they go so far so quickly. Uh, and Keith was pointing out a lump of chassis that's, well not chassis, but part of the bodywork that's rotten on this. So it would repair, but who knows. Right folks, I think that brings Monday to an end. I'll see you all tomorrow for more coming games. Bye now. And so folks, Tuesday came and went. I've scrapped this because there's a little tiny switch in it which is the start switch which has got two springs in it which have failed and I've decided that it's not worth the hassle putting it together. It's a pity because it's a nice little starter but I'm going to get another one. So that's the uh, that's the Rapido job knackered so what I did when my mate Richard came to see me what I started doing was I cleaned up this new chuck cleaned up the taper on it put it on and I was going to put a pin in there and see how it, uh, it's running and then tomorrow I am going to get this bloody lathe aligned get the head aligned realigned with the bed so that I can start using it again because I haven't used this lathe since I rebuilt it to any extent because it's slightly out on the alignment with the tailstock uh, I use the Kovmak every time so there you go so that's what I'm going to do tomorrow and I'll see you then bye now afternoon folks Wednesday four o'clock and I've fitted my machine light, wired it up, put one of those 50 volt bulbs in it so generously sent to me by Carl Wilson. And look at that. Isn't that just amazing? Right. That was a little aside. So what have I been doing all day? Well, I've been tidying up. I've been tidying up because I've got a visitor coming tomorrow and I've got a visitor coming next week. So I've been trying to generally muck out, make the place a bit more respectable and get some stuff sorted out and chucked away. 
So that's what I've been doing, but I've not been filming because I'm a very bad person. Look at this. Look at that for a face plate. Good, eh? No use to me because it's a. Uh, whatever that is, it's a D Camlock, I think. But what number it is, I don't know. But if anybody knows anybody that wants one, there it is. A beautiful thing. And it could be your very own. Right. What I'm going to do now is I have a piece of strange, strange, strange bar here. Now what is it? It's very heavy, very heavy indeed. I think it could be tungsten or some sort of tool steel. But it is very straight, so I'm going to put it in the chuck. Put a clock on it and see how much run out this chuck's got on it. And when I've got it in, I'll bring you back. Right, we're set up there, and this chuck isn't as good as I hoped it might be. But you can't expect anything else because it's a well used chuck. It's off an old lathe. And if you look there, it's running less than 10 thou. Out here, it's running about 15. Out. But I'm sure I can improve that. Um, uh, I might strip it down and, and clean it out, but I have proved something straight away because by going to the highest point and then tapping it, it's improved it greatly so it's not seating on the taper and to be honest, looking at that taper I'm not surprised, it's not very good, it's got some very nasty, I have I have been round it with a, with a scraper and taken all the high spots off it and I have wire brushed it out with a die grinder with a wire brush on it and got all the, uh, all the high spots I can see down but it's still not seating right. I think I can improve it a bit more but anyway that's by the by. Now I'm going to take the chuck off and put the test bar in and wind along the test bar and see how far the uh, the head is out of alignment. So I'll set that up and I'll bring you back again. Right, well I might get away with that last clip and I might not because I put the, I left the radio on. Can you see? Let me just see if I can get you lined up and so you can see how bad that taper is in there. How it looks like somebody's been hitting it with the chisel. But I don't know what you can do with these. I don't know whether you can regrind them or not. But that's awful. That really is bad. And it's not it's it's not seating properly. Which is exactly what you would expect really. There's nothing wrong with the taper. Right, I shall get the uh, get the test bar out, get that in and put the dial gauge back on. As I said I was going to, and this time I'll leave the radio off. And I'll crack on with it. Right folks, time has beaten me, it's five o'clock, but we have got the light on, we've got lots of tidying up done. I've just had this inside the taper, and the taper is good, right, there's less than half a thou out there, but there was a huge great scrape there, I'm going to have to spend some more time on this taper, getting that seated properly. Because if you knock the if you knock the test bar out again, turn it 90 degrees and knock it back in again, you improve the reading. So what we've got is a badly seating taper there and a badly seating taper inside there. So I do have actually I do have a Morse taper reamer that will fit inside there. So I could just skim it round with that and see if it picks anything up. Because that will take the high spots off. But of course I have worked on this before and I have, I have worked inside this taper before and taken loads and loads of dings out and blued it up. Well what I'm going to have to do now is blue it up again and probably ream that and then blue that up again as well. Right, that's it for today. Tomorrow Andy's coming with some antiques to mend. So tomorrow we'll be mending antiques. So I'll see you all then. Bye now.
morning folks it's well it's actually lunchtime cup of tea time and we're among antiques we've been putting new tangs on well not putting new tangs on but extending the tangs of swords where they've broken off uh, and salvaging some handles making a candlestick putting a thread on an eagle <laughs> and uh, we've still quite a few antiquities to go so I'll crack on and at the end of the day I'll show you what we've achieved I'll show you what we've achieved these are interesting bits and pieces aren't they right I'll bring you back when I've done it No, so, no, no. we're progressing well, putting threads on things, boring little holes in little brass pommels and putting 2BA threads in them, which is not easy because I think they're phosphor bronze, I think they're little bearings out or something, so it doesn't drill very well. But we're getting there, things are getting done. I don't know what I can show you at the moment. I'm just working on this at the moment. That's going to be soldered onto the end of another piece. And at the moment, I've just had to heat this up and hopefully soften it because I've just tried turning it down to the right diameter for 2BA thread and it's hard as a Hobbs of Helen. It just bends in the lathe. So I have uh, ground it to the right size I've now softened it because it suddenly struck me that well if it's as hard as hell it's not going to thread very well so I've heated it up to the uh, to the uh, curry point and kept it there for five minutes which is quarter thick so 20 minutes per inch of thickness so that should now be soft so let's put a file in it and see if it is That doesn't sound right. It's the fire. Yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it's firing. Right, let's get it tapped. Starting. A piece of blackened bar. Because I've just softened it. Because believe it or not, that spindle is hard as the hobs of hell. I tried reducing it in the lathe to put a 2BA thread on it. And uh, the, it was just click, click, clicking against the tool. And then it bent. So this is the second one. I've done the first one. I actually ground the first one down to the right size and uh, this one I've softened first to soften it you heat it up until it stops being magnetic now that's magnetic right when it reaches what's called the curie point when it's glowing red hot it is no longer magnetic and then you hold it there at red heat for 20 minutes for every inch of thickness so this is a quarter thick so I held it there for five minutes right and that will now be soft the other one is ground down and done and inside that handle so we're getting on a pace we're getting on a pace but it's a cup of tea time Here's a cracking little repair on the pistol. It had broken around the hole and so we took some more metal off, welded a new piece on and Andy's filed it up and we've drilled it and it's now ready to go back together. But uh, there's just another, another broken thing that's now a fixed thing. And that's the sort of stuff we're doing. I've just done this with a long thread through it and a nice square whipless nut. Very similar job here. A, uh, a candlestick which uh, needed a bolt on it. Little soldering job. Two little soldering jobs there. And they'll be done. Right, onward. Well, that's day one of antiques repairs 
finished, folks. And we're going to have another day tomorrow. So it'll be two days of this. How wonderful. Oh, look. It's a Mills bomb. Right. That's it. See you all tomorrow. Bye now. Morning, folks. Antique repairs are in full swing. We've been putting handles on doorstops and doing various things to various things. These are very interesting. These are tip staffs which need soldering repairs on them and these were used with the warrant for somebody's arrest or a warrant to be served rolled up inside them and all you had to do to serve the warrant was to go up to the person and tap them on the shoulder with the tip staff and that was it the warrant was considered to be served there you go he looks angry, that looks like somebody out of a zombie film there you go I still haven't found out what we're doing with these Mills bombs yet Right, onwards. What I'm doing at the moment is I'm drilling this final doorstop to tap it quarter of Whitworth. And then that one's got a handle on as well. These are uh, these are things that have that are broken, that have had the handles, the cast iron handles have, have been broken off them uh, eons ago and they've just been chucked in a corner and uh, took to one side to wait to be repaired well now they're being repaired and they're all going to go back on the market again okay i'll bring you back when we're doing some more bye now so folks the end of friday repaired stuff repaired stuff these were both broken at the top we've put new handles on them that didn't have a handle We've made shafts and made and put threads on here and put all these together. There's another one in there. A Mills bomb. That one's got its original fuse bottom in. That one's now got an exploded fuse bottom in that I've turned down and threaded to fit the Mills bomb. Double-ended screws of a size that can't be bought. And the blade with a new tang on. A sword blade with a tang formed to match that one. And on and on and on it goes. But we're finished. We're both knackered. We've had enough. This is interesting. We think this is a wind tunnel model. And it has all these different nose cones that fit onto it we don't really know what it is it's got all those missiles as well and the cockpit shape, the canopy shape is for all the world like TSR2 but there you go but the missiles are something American a strange thing anybody that knows anybody that's got any idea Shout up. There's also all these things in here, look. All those little things in there, which are all like little nose cone fittings. Very delicate. Right, folks. That's it for this week. That's it for this week. That apparently is a watch stand. Uh, pocket watch stand which needs a little brass hook in it I might just pop over to my box and see if I've got one right that's it folks thank you all for watching thanks for subscribing and I'll see you all next week don't forget to send me a comment or a like and I'll see you all next week bye now